Good evening. Well, the opening weekend of the Barclays Women's Super League certainly didn't disappoint with plenty of goals, drama and shock results. And now in week two, a familiar face returns to the club. She called home for three years as last season's top four go head to head. Manchester City against Chelsea has become one of the big rivalries. And cross here, surely! Fran Kirby puts Chelsea in front. Philippa Andeldahl, what a start for Manchester City. The shot from Hemp is a brilliant goal again. It's the big one, Manchester United versus Arsenal. Oh, what a goal! Laura Wienreuter for Arsenal. Would you believe it? It's Alessio Russo. Russo! What would Manchester United do without her? What a show we have in store. So with both sides winning last weekend, could the reigning champions Chelsea prosper away from home at Manchester City? Arsenal's marquee summer signing Alessia Russo went back to Manchester United for the first time, with the Gunners looking to bounce back from their shock opening day defeat. Whilst the team that beat them, Liverpool, aimed to make it two from two at home to Aston Villa. Well, if you thought last weekend was dramatic, strap yourselves in tonight. Joining me to bring you up to speed with it all, it's Anita Asante and Fern Whelan. Well, Manchester was the place to be, it felt like, this weekend. So we're going to start the show at the Joy Stadium as Manchester City welcomed Chelsea. Now, City won this fixture back in March. Could they do the same again this weekend? Talking you through this one, Rachel Brown Finnis and Vicky Sparks. The prolific Khadija Shaw is back on the bench after injury as Manchester City make two changes. Philippa Angledahl and Esme Morgan in for Dana Castellanos and the suspended Leila Wahabi. Alex Greenwood, who enjoyed such an excellent World Cup with England over the summer, makes her 100th appearance for the club. Ellie Roebuck, their number one last season, doesn't make the squad. We understand that's rotation rather than any injury. Chelsea welcome their star striker back to the fold as well. Sam Kerr amongst the substitutes following that calf problem. Erin Cuthbert is also back from injury and starts in one of three changes. Ashley Lawrence makes her full Chelsea debut and Jessie Fleming also comes in for her 100th Chelsea appearance. And before kickoff, we will take a moment here to remember a Manchester City legend, Franny Lee former City striker and chairman, passed away this week, aged 79, a club legend in every sense. <laughs> Kelly wants more. Back in by Angledahl. Hemp will drive. It's a good save by Mushevic. Excellent technique by Lauren Hemp. Chelsea will clear away. Good pressure, though, by Manchester City. See here how Jill Roard and Lauren Hemp are already finding that link. Kelly. And Morgan getting forward. Fowler. Kelly. She'll try a lot. Oh, what a goal! Pick that one out from Chloe Kelly. Outstanding. And Manchester City take the lead with a goal of real quality. Wow. Mary Fowler drifted out to the right and just sets it. 
Chloe Kelly takes a touch, sees the gap, no pressure on it from Erin Cuthbert, and that is a rapid fire strike from Chloe Kelly. Erin's under pressure. Kelly and Cuthbert just about managed to retain it, and they do win the free kick. So Alex Greenwood into the book. So here is James. Lovely bit of skill. Cleared away by Kennedy. Charles back in. Ingles there. Off the line. And the follow up from Carter blocked away to safety. Chelsea getting closer. Brilliant save from Kiara Keaton. Point blank header from Sophie Ingle. Moves across, gets in position. She's in a position to make a save. Another yellow for Alex Greenwood. And she's already been booked. And the Manchester City captain is sent off. Remarkable. And they need to keep their heads here, Manchester City. alexandri has gone into the book for complaining as well. That is ridiculous, in my opinion. She's been given for time wasting. The second yellow card. The referee has to sh show some discretion. She's not purposely time wasting. She's allowing her team to move up the pitch to get into position. If you're a footballer, an ex-footballer, you know these things. That's a really poor decision, in my opinion, from the official. So a double change for Chelsea, a single change for Manchester City, down to 10. Here goes Chloe Kelly, up against Jess Carter. Kelly's still going. Mushevich right behind it, but you can taste the encouragement that the Joy Stadium was providing Chloe Kelly there. They are so up for this. Midway through the second half. Chelsea come forward again. They've won a corner, but they have not tested Kiara Keating as much as they might have done with the player advantage. Oh, yellow card for Hemp. I'm guessing, but I'm presuming that's in not agreeing with the referee's decision. Chelsea need to use the widths. Dragging City out. Here goes James looking for that curler off the bar. Brilliant effort from Lauren James. The trademark curling shot rattling the woodwork. Chelsea still keep up the pressure. It would be a remarkable result should it stand one that Manchester City have worked exceptionally hard for. But Chelsea still come and they've won the set piece. Now, another red card, a second yellow. Lauren Hemp, Manchester City down to nine. And we said, didn't we, when she picked up that yellow card for descent, it was pointless. It was a loss of discipline. And it has cost Manchester City. She's holding her back, pulling her arm. It's a yellow card every single minute of every single game. Free kick to Chelsea. And Manchester City survive. They're all appealing for it. Good free kick. Oh, and it's a brilliant save from K.R. Keaton, actually, right at the end. Jasper Wright. Ruby Mace has got forward. No thoughts of going to the corner. Oh, Khadija Shaw was in there. And what a twist in the tail that would have been. On the counter, no thought of taking it to the corner. Only the thought of getting that second goal. It's a wave of blue against the sky blue of Manchester City. James with the delivery. Bright with the header. Oh, it's off the bar again. Kerr with the miscue and cleared away to safety by Alana Kennedy. They won't prevent the corner, but they did prevent the equaliser. 
Sam Kerr on top of the game would have eaten that one up. Would have nestled in the back of the goal. Huge moment this for City, for Chelsea. Corner delivered in. Oh, what a save by Keating. Can Chelsea smuggle it in? Yes, they can. Guru right in with the equaliser. And Manchester City hearts are broken. Chelsea have finally found a way through. And Manchester City, who have fought so, so hard. What a brilliant save from Jara Keaton. It was almost over the line. The way she reached back to scoop it from behind the line here. She thinks that's going in. They managed to recycle it just enough. And it scrambled home from Guru Wrighton. Will there be one last chance for Chelsea? Here they go. Kirby. Charles. Bright's in there. So's Wrighton. Wrighton challenged brilliantly and cleared away by Esme Morgan. Still we play on. Chelsea have a player down. Kerr's in there with the header. Oh, it's off the post. Chelsea hit the woodwork for the third time in this match. This is the header from Sam Kerr. Looping just drops down and hits the post. It's the block before that. Shot from Sam Kerr from Alexandri that is absolutely goal saving. Time to play it in. Oh. And Keating's there. And that is that. What a match. What a title race we're going to have this season. Plenty of analysis to come. But it's finished. Manchester City won, Chelsea won. I think our challenge today was our final third play. I thought that's where we laboured and struggled. And I'm pleased that we got a goal, which shows our resilience. But for Man City at home, second game in, this is a game they really, really want to win. So I'm really happy for a point on the board. Obviously, the bit of a game changer is, is, uh, is obviously Alex's red card, which changes everything, you know, and it's frustrating. Um, particularly when we seem to have gone from like here to here all of a sudden on dishing out those yellow cards and it's really it's a difficult one to take that because the girls were magnificent. Okay, well a game that really did have everything including as we saw plenty of controversy. Firstly, Anita, do you share the frustrations of Gareth Taylor of Rachel Brown finishing commentary <laughs> there and of many people since that game? Yeah, I think Gareth Taylor and the City fans will feel really aggrieved because that first half display, especially from Man City, it was a dominant one. And, you know, so many decisions in the game impacted kind of the momentum and the flow uh, quite severely for them. OK, let's go straight into it then and go through these decisions. Firstly, Alex Greenwood's red card for two yellows. Here's the first yellow. No arguments here, Fern? No, I don't think Alex would be able to argue with that one. I think she's left a leg in, she's late in the challenge, and obviously the rest give her a yellow card, which, she, as I say, she won't argue with that one. Anissa, the second one. I'll let you take this away. <laughs> yeah, I, I, think, I still think it's a shocking decision. We've watched it multiple times, and I'm still just an, annoyed about it, really. You can see Alex Greenwood here is looking for options to play. Can she play short? Can she play long? The referee makes no signal to give her a warning, just to, you know, hurry her up and speed up play. So she has no idea and suddenly the card comes out and it just, it just makes no sense to me. Yeah, for me, I think it's, as you say, there's no warning in there and, you know, it's a bit of common sense in terms of she's looking to play the pass. We see it all the time, so we've done it ourselves as defenders. Sometimes that pass isn't on straight away. You have to take a step back, have another look and she's played the ball. No warning and it's a really frustrating one. At the time it was in the game, she didn't really have any yeah. reason to be time wasting either. Yeah, the rule says it's about excessively delaying a restart is your issue that you didn't feel that was excessive. I didn't think I didn't feel it was excessive, but I also think it's subjective. So in some games, a referee is going to say that's excessive time waste. In another game, it might not be given. But it just seemed that Alex Greenwood was looking for options. She had no idea that the referee was going to approach her <laughs> and caution her either. So I just thought it changed the game massively, and it's not really something that you want to see. OK, well, Lauren Hemp was the other Manchester City player to be sent off. But just before she got her first yellow card, Fern, we saw this challenge on her. 
Yeah, you know, I think what we're asking for is a little bit of consistency within the game. So you see Lauren Hempy, yeah, she clearly wins the ball. She's first to the ball. And Ashley Lawrence is really late in the tackle. So it, the, for me, it's no different to what we've just saw Alex Greenwood do in her other challenge. And that deserved a booking. She's late in the tackle. Her leg is left in. And obviously, Lauren Hemp lands really awkwardly on her shoulder. So it's a dangerous tackle. And again, there's no consistency there. These are the yellow cards that she gets, though. Is this the frustration getting the better of her, Anita? Of course, the frustration probably did get the better of her, and it's about managing emotions. We actually don't know what she said to the referee. She could have just been having a word, but she gets cautioned, and, of course, the scent is, is part of the game. But this one is clearly a foul. She does pull Lauren James down by the arm, and she's just trying to recover and defend. But there was a build-up of moments like this that you just felt was coming, and then the, the cautions just went out of control. Yeah, talking of the cautions, there was 11 in total in this match. Did it feel like it warranted that many cards? Not to me, not to <laughs> me. It was a game of actually before the cards started coming out. There was actually some real good football on show. We saw some really good chances, especially from Manchester City at the start of the game. I thought Chloe Kelly was fantastic. So, you know, we're coming to the end of the game and we're talking again about refereeing decisions that aren't obviously appropriate or what we deem the correct ones. So I think what we want to be talking about is the football, but we shouldn't have to be talking about this. I think, as you said before, there's a bit of clarity on what we're classing as dissent. Can you still talk to a referee yeah. or, you know, the conversations, can you still have those conversations or is it when it comes across aggressively? And then again, the time wasting and things like that. It's the clarity for us that isn't quite there. OK, well, let's try and focus on some of the good football that we did witness, starting with Manchester City's goal. Is this Chloe Kelly at her best? Absolutely, and I thought the interchange of movement between herself, Hemp and Fowler just to find that little bit of space on the edge of the box and just, just unleash a shot, you know, that of course it takes a slight deflection of Jess Carter's foot here, but she has that ability to take, you know, shots from distance with quality and it leads to a fantastic goal. Yeah, I think for me in that instance, Erin Cuthbert, I'd like to have seen her get tighter. Mm. She doesn't defensively do her job in terms of stopping a turn in there. Don't give Chloe Kelly that much time on the edge of the box because you know what she's capable of. OK, well, City were hanging on <laughs> for long periods of that game when they went down to nine players. Will Gareth Taylor take plenty of heart from the way his side did hold on for so, so long and particularly the performance of his goalkeeper, 19-year-old Kiara Keating? Most definitely. They really dug deep. They got numbers behind the ball. You saw last-ditch tackles. Kiara Keating was exceptional throughout the game here. She's quickly off the line, commanding the box. She shows so much maturity in her play and confidence in those areas. And, you know, some of the defending was just outstanding, considering that they were, you know, two players down. Yeah, I completely agree. I think Keaton was fantastic. But for me, this tackle here from Alexandra it keeps them in the game at this point. It's a fantastic tackle. It was bodies on the line throughout. And, you know, they really deserved where they were within the game. Obviously, so late on as well, winning. Well, and <laughs> not quite winning, but... Not quite winning it, <laughs> yes, because right on cue, of course, Guru Wrighton popping up with the equaliser. And, of course, there was another brilliant save in the build-up to this as well. Yeah, again, it's a set-piece situation. You just see her claw that ball out from the goal there. And, and again, it's just really unfortunate. They're all trying to last-ditch defending on the line. And I think it just goes through Hasegawa's leg from that Guru Wrighton finish. Yeah, and really important to note at this point, they're actually down to yeah. eight players <laughs> on the pitch. So, Alana... Kennedy, who's been winning headers for them left, right and centre throughout the game, is actually off on the touchline, coming back from an injury. So, you know, they really probably missed her at a vital point in the game there, unfortunately. We could talk about this game all <laughs> evening, but unfortunately we do have to move on. And I told you there was drama, didn't I? We're going to rewind to Friday night now for the weekend's opener as 